Far removed from the circuit breakers and receptacles used for personnel protection in residential and commercial buildings, an industrial ground fault sensor is designed to increase the safe operation of equipment, whether a single phase circuit for snow melting mats embedded in concrete or three phase circuits powering silicon wafer fabricating equipment. Rather than breaking the load from the supplied power directly, a sensor designed for an industry will provide a contact change to a programmable controller, a shunt trip breaker operating solenoid, or an analog signal proportional to the fault current magnitude, displayed by panel meter or the HMI of the controller. Rather than only interrupting or disconnecting the fault circuit immediately, the sensor output can be used to alarm first. One example would be a reflow soldering process, where printed circuit boards loaded with various components are fed through an oven. The board stopped at the thermal soak, or the TAL zone, because a fault was detected and the net supporting the assembly stopped moving the boards, the mess would be horrendous. The machine operators would be praying that the exhaust hoods were up to the challenge. The fault sensing is most commonly accomplished by using a zero sequence or core balance current transformer. By surrounding all the phase conductors and the neutral, if the load uses one, there is no output from the current transformer regardless of the amount of current in each conductor, balanced or unbalanced. But there will be an output when the summing of the flux in these currents rises above zero. The same approach is used to monitor single phase or three phase circuits. There are many industrial workplaces and outdoor areas where the National Electrical Code requires ground fault sensing, but not for the protection of personnel. There is little chance that the personnel operating the electrically powered equipment in these situations will be barefoot or standing on a wet floor with bare hands. In these industrial areas, the goal is to protect equipment rather than people. Here, 30 milliamps of fault current to earth is a much more common detection level. To see how low-level fault current can cause problems, consider a motor winding that is becoming stressed because of environmental variations. It takes more power for the motor to run properly, but the extra current required doesn't create enough of a variation to trip a breaker. Small amounts of leakage current can eventually lead to a massive breakdown. The method used to detect the fault in such industrial settings is the same as that used in bathrooms and garages. The typical setup uses one very sensitive, magnetically permeable ring wound with wire, surrounding all current carrying conductors. The neutral is included if the neutral is used by the monitored load. If there is any current supplied to the load which is not returned to the source, a very small magnetic field will develop and cause the wire-wrapped ring to produce a voltage. Through amplification and filtering, this low output signal can be used to operate an output contact. A major difference between personnel protection and equipment protection beyond the fault current detection level is whether the circuit must be immediately disconnected from the source power. During some industrial processes, shutting off the power before the process is completed would cause more damage than the fault current. The NEC allows for detection of the fault with disconnecting the load. In these specific applications, the sensor contact can be used to send a signal to a controller, generate an audible or visual alarm, or perform some other function. In most cases, the sensor contact would be used to control the operating coil of a contactor or to operate a shunt trip circuit breaker. In either case, the contactor or the circuit breaker would disconnect the faulting load from the power source. For more videos like this, go to designworldonline.com.